We all have a lot of things to handle in our lives. Uh, projects, uh, school, or work, or church, or all these things uh, can be cumbersome and uh, it can get all too hectic. And in this video, I will be sharing with you seven tips on how to make your life more organized and allow you to be more productive. The first thing is to reduce decision making. This can arise because of choices overload. There are so many choices out there from our personal life, what to wear, where to go, what to eat. There are just too many choices and that can allow us to um, drain our brain because we're just like, what should I do next? Um, this, 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 or this, and it allows us to be disorganized. How you can change that is uh, simple things like your clothing. So there's a reason why Steve Jobs used to always wear black. That was because uh, he just eliminated uh, the amount of choice he will make in like clothing and stuff. Does that mean we should all go around wearing black like we're going to a funeral? No. You can still live on the colorful side of life and still implement this concept. How I do this is to choose on a designated day of the week to pick all the items of clothing that I want to wear in that week. Hence, I'm still implementing this, but still allowing color in my life because, yo, I love color. This is not only limited to clothing, but can be introduced into things like food. And this is where the idea of meal planning kind of helps because you have a designated meal for each period of the day during the week. If that doesn't work for your lifestyle, you can still tweak that idea. You can set a variety of options for the week and then eat them mix and match. Or you can just set ingredients and have a list to go through for each day of the week. Tweak and find what works best for you. But this idea is still not limited to all these things I mentioned. It can be used in different facets of your life. Just see what are the things that are especially like recurring frequently and see how you can reduce the amount of decisions you have to make on those things. Next is to make a master list. A master list is a really long list of all the things you have to do like you can ever think of uh, maybe for the year for the month you just write down all the things that you have to do so sometimes we always have things that just there's no set deadline so they're always hanging in the air and uh, we haven't really worked on them so but a good thing to really get organized is just to write them down write out start with the week really like what do i need to get done for this week that i'm not sure of? what would i like to get done what do i need or want to get done write them all out write the month for the month write for the quarter write for the year things that you would like to get done but you just haven't set like a particular date then organize them into like the ones that have deadline priority deadline the ones that you just would like to get done they, are, they aren't really like that important and the ones that are you know you need to get done you need to set time and dates for those and following which you can just set those time and dates Having all of this organized is good to make reference to when you feel like you have free time and there is nothing, you don't know what to do with that time. Or it just helps you to have like a detailed pathway of what you need to like be working on as the week comes, as the day comes. The next thing to do to get really organized is to decide on which planning systems is good for you. So. I make use of a planner or rather planners um, <laughs> and this gives you uh, you can use it for um, you can decide on there are different planning systems rather you can have a, a yearly planning system a monthly a quarterly or daily weekly planning system this especially is like a student guide so this works best for like semester stuff so yeah if you look around you really find like planners that can fit your particular lifestyle and what the two the top two that i find the most efficient and helpful when getting started with planners has to be the monthly planning system which just gives you an overview of the month and allows you to just jot down things that might come up that might be important you can use 
you can use a physical planner or a digital one like Google Calendar. And then the next thing I really like about this is that they allow you to plan for the week. So you have a, a like an overview of each day of the week. You might not even need to like get a planner like this. You might just use your regular notebook, use it and jot down all the things that just brain dump basically and then we'll find those brain dumps for each day and each week and even on the day off you can continue to refine just because things come up and we have to be realistic and time saving but having all those things done on a paper or on a digital device if all of that sounds too complicated let me let me introduce you to this tip that i got from earn on demand and other people um productivity gurus which is to use the top three things yes top three things <laughs> so this is essentially allowing you to pick three items to ensure that you focus on completing for the day this is really good to avoid procrastination and just uh, you know um, wasting time and all these things because you will set you will pick three items that you're sure you want to get done I sometimes add five and then uh, ensure that you set a allotted time to work on those things work on them get them accomplished and then improve to the next one if you get them completed great if you don't you push it to a next date or you move them complete it's always good to refine if if you find that things have been on your to-do list for a long time just reflect, do you really need to get this done? Is this really helping you? Is this really helping you reach your goals? So, and then if it's not, you remove them. But this is how to use the top three methods. Next thing is to really delegate. Focus on delegating your time and also delegating to other persons. Delegating your time. So you've always, you've probably heard the saying, we all have the same 24 hours or whatever. And it's what we decide to do with those 24 hours that will matter. So I've already touched on this in the previous tip, which is that you set a specific time for an activity. So a lot of times uh, we allow time to run out uh, from us because uh, we haven't set uh, an activity. We have the we have the things to do in our head, uh, but we haven't set a particular time to get them done. And so it's always like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. And yeah, that's because you haven't set that specific time to get this task done. How um, to implement this can be using focus sprints or concept called Pomodoro, which is to set 25 hours of work and then five minutes of break or 45 minutes of work and then five minutes of break intermediately to work on a specific task. That can be done. You can easily, you know, set a timer for a task so that you can really gauge how long it will take you. And this helps for the next time you're planning so that you can easily remember that, oh, this took me one hour to complete. Let me allot one hour to complete this task. Allotting specific times in, spe in the day, allotting specific times in week and ensuring that they're not negotiables because we all have been to like meetings and stuff that we're like, oh, so I'm sorry, I, I can't make it at this time. I have another engagement. If you have like priority projects that just like have deadlines that are up to you, it's good to set those times in your calendar, in everywhere. And so when something comes up, you can say, sorry, I can't make it because this is already allotted to this. And that's how you can allot time to task and allow yourself to be more productive because you've said you'll do it, so just do it, basically. Delegating tasks to people. This is most helpful, in, especially if you work in teams. You might be the team leader or just someone working for a particular arm of whatever organization it is. A lot of times we forget to involve the other persons in that group in the tasks that we do and then it helps us it makes it leaves us a lot more work than should have been allotted so a good thing is to just take stock of the different groups you're part of different activities you are doing and see if you can you know delegate some stay in a group sorry i can't, there this this and this needs to be done i don't have enough time can anyone help out with this 
or you know um delegate to persons around you like friends or family yeah which brings me into the next step reaching out for help reach out for help from friends families and um, other spaces which i'll touch on later but really friends and families are there for support and uh, you know giving care you there might be some task in your life that you really can just ask uh, a brother a sister hey could you get this done for me and that uh, that really saves you time or it can just be that you ask them to help you with like the essentials of life like hey could you please um prep this food for me so that i can get time to get this done or could you pack this for me and that not to explore it obviously but just especially when it's a crunch time time that you need it's good to lean on those people don't feel like you're burdening them but to lean on them you know moderately <laughs> the next thing the next aspect of this is to reach out for help you might be skilled in a particular area and you're working on a project in that area and there are might be people around you that are looking to develop skills in the area that you have a bit of proficiency in you can so you can look around your 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 space your community who do you think uh, could benefit from a skill that you have and then kind of like bring them into like mentorship and uh, you know you're offering value to them while they're also helping you with your task another thing is to look online I know that there are platforms that match your apprentice to skilled professionals. Um, a platform I've particularly been a part of is called Flick, F-L-I-K. This matches young females to uh, older female entrepreneurs in different area, arts, science, business, uh, creative ventures. And uh, some of these are even like um, offer payment so or stipends so you can sign up to be like a mentor <laughs> to a specific person on these platforms and get those mentees who are really just looking for like work experience and value and you pour it into them while they also help you with your task and help you to be more organized lastly this can really help with like you know not burning out just having the mentality that you will control what you can and live what you can't control to god and you know just pray over all that you do because really and truly we can plan and plan but we can't get everything done and not to beat ourselves too much for it but to just work on becoming better each day i hope this tips help and just to recap eliminate the unnecessary refine and refocus delegate your time plan wisely and reach out for help never stop curating your best life until next time bye and don't forget to like share and subscribe